Hey everyone, hope you're all having an amazing day. In this video, we're going to go through the top 15 characters to take all the way to Relic 7. Keep in mind, I'm trying to base this purely on the character itself or the effect their boost has on the team, but not on the overall strength of the team itself. For instance, I'm not going to list every clone or Sith Empire character, just because they're two of the strongest teams in the game right now. So I'm sorry in advance if you disagree with my list. It's not designed to be a top 15 characters list or anything like that, but hey, that's an idea for a future video. So these characters are all going to be ranked based on my personal opinion, taking into account a wide array of factors I'll explain in more detail on the unveiling of the curtain. It's been a really tough list to make, if I'm being honest, especially deciding who made the cut at the lower end. Also, fair warning, a few of them might not make much sense until after the explanation, but without any further delay, let's get started. Starting up at number 15, we have Wat Tambor. Wait, don't click off, I have a good reason for this. If you look at his Overseer ability, you'll notice he grants Separatist and Dark Side Droid allies 30% max protection based on Wat Tambor's max health. So the higher his relic is, the more this is going to be for the rest of your team. This is why he just about made the cut for me, as this could be a really nice boost to your Separatist teams. Unfortunately, not many people have him 7 star yet, which is why he's only on the number 15 spot as we don't know how effective this is going to be, but it's an effect that could really help boost his team so I believe he deserves this spot on the list. He can also revive dead dark side droid and separatist allies, apply constant heal over times to his allies and damage over times to his enemies, as well as granting powerful tech bonuses to his allies for the remainder of the battle, meaning he's going to be a key player on a lot of teams and a common target for opponents, making a high relic level on him very beneficial in that regard too. At our 14 spot, we have Savage Press. A lot of you might remember this guy from a couple of years ago as being extremely hard to kill, and with relic levels, this has only boosted him yet again to extreme levels. For those who don't know too much about him, once you get his Zeta, he's going to gain 30% turn meter whenever he's hit, as well as offense up, defense up, and a heal over time buff with the latter stacking up very quickly to provide him with insane healing. He's also going to dispel all debuffs from himself whenever he's critically hit. In addition to all of that, his second ability will instantly kill anything with less than 50% health. This makes him a really strong contender for Gak, TW, and even Darkseid GOTB. The only downside is it's a big investment to make on such a niche character, but for those who do, we'll see the benefits he provides. Up at 13, we have R2-D2, who is here for one particular reason, and that reason is his number crunch ability, which when Zetted grants resistance, Galactic Republic, Droid and Rebel allies, 10% of his max protection, health, offense and potency. Outside of this, he has a place in so many different teams making it likely he's going to be viable for a very long time. He also provides stealth and cleansing to his squad, which makes him an absolutely amazing support character, but I won't talk too much about that as it's not really related to Relic 7 in him. At our number 12 spot, we have the one and only General Kenobi, who's been a dominant character since his release, taking part in many, many metas, and he's still present in one of them to this day. He's a very safe investment in that regard because of having such a universal kit that can transition over into so many teams. Taking him to Relic 7 is a relatively safe bet, as he's always going to be relevant in some way. With that aside, he's currently a key player on the Padme team. Getting around him is always the top goal, as it usually is with any team he's on. So making him even harder to kill with Relic 7 is going to do wonders. If that isn't enough for you all, his Zeta has made him even more annoying when on a full Galactic Republic team, making him taunt whenever an ally loses protection up, on top of him already taunting when an ally is crit. And if that still isn't enough for you all, he's currently the fleet meta with his negotiator ship which makes an investment in him to this level even more justified. And my god, if you don't have General Anakin unlocked, save yourself hours of rage and relic him today for the second tier of the event. At our number 11 spot, we have Count Dooku, who became a lot more important since his rework and release of GOTB. But for you vets, don't forget when this guy was absolute top tier in the first year of the game. While he took a long break from viability, his return now is an extremely annoying character to face off against at max relic level. As most of you know, he has a 100% counter chance, applies ability block and stun on his basic, and with his Zeta recovers 15% protection and crit hit immunity whenever he attacks at a turn. Without a top tier team or some kind of daze, this guy can pretty much end teams. While not quite as powerful as the likes of Nest, he works in a very similar fashion. He also has the added bonus of being able to completely ignore protection while he has the buff from his third ability when counter-attacking, meaning he can really tear through a team. On top of all this, he's required for a lot of missions in Dark Side Geo, where you're pretty much going to need him relic high anyway. And coming into our top 10 is Sith Marauder for his insane damage and being able to one-shot Malaks. His damage at Relic 7 is absolutely ridiculous. 
This is because he gains 2% offense, crit chance and potency for each debuff on the battlefield. So with dark side Bastilers on both sides and large amounts of ferocity stacks in play, you can imagine how powerful his damage is. He's also very useful in the HCF, TB and any form of PvP really. He also has an average ship that has some uses, so overall a very well rounded character, however he is reliant on the Darth Revan lead for the most part, but given the power he brings to the match I had no choice but to include him so high in my list. Up next at 9 we have everyone's favourite Jedi, Jolie Bindu. I don't think I really need to explain why he's on the list, he was the bane of everyone's existence during the Jedi Knight Revan meta, and while that team is not quite as strong as it used to be, it's still very relevant and has a lot of uses. Taking Jolie to Relic 7 will make this team even harder to deal with, considering winning pretty much relies on being able to kill him or he's just going to keep reviving every Jedi in the field. His basic ability will also heal him for 30% of his max health, he's extremely hard to crit because of his unique, and his second ability will call an assist as well as heal the target for 30% of Jolie's max health and the rest of the Jedi on his team for half of that. So having him at Relic 7 he's going to make these heals alone ridiculously high. At the number 8 spot we have Raid Han who is one of the best attackers in the game and at Relic 7 combined with Chewbacca he can kill or seriously damage almost any character in the game with his shoot first ability which will make him take a bonus turn at the start of each battle hitting the enemy twice and calling Chewie to assist. This damage is absolutely insane at Relic 7 and on top of this he's a pilot for the Falcon which is still a top tier ship. An investment in Han is one you most certainly won't regret. Up next at 7 is Fives, who's on this list partly for his insane damage while also being a pretty decent tank, but the main reason is because of his tactical awareness setter, which makes him take the death of another 501st clone ally, and then as he dies grants all 501st clones his max protection, speed and offense stats. Now you can all imagine how powerful this makes him to his team in modes such as light side GOTB and right now in arena under gas lead 2. The downside I guess is that he has to die to do his best work, but this is so beneficial to his team it's earned him a spot on the list. Coming in at number 6 we have the bane of many people's existence, Nest. Do I really need to explain this one? By far one of the most annoying characters in the game because she is so annoying to kill for so many teams, but at higher relic levels it gets even worse. This is because as her health increases so does her protection up. This is because the 40% protection up she gains each time she's hit is based on her health not her base protection as many people mistakenly believe. So once she finally takes a turn thus losing her protection up and it's your time to actually have a shot at damaging her, she's got Relic 7 health so good luck getting anything done before the bonus protection starts stacking up again. Alright everyone, before we get into our top 5 I have a few honourable mentions who sadly did not make this list. Some of these were really tough to exclude but I just felt everyone else on this list is a little more deserving of the spots. Arc Trooper and Brood Alpha due to sharing their stats with their summoned units. Wampa for being able to solo certain teams and would be amazing at Relic 7 especially against Rebel squads. Masked Kylo Ren for his insane survivability and protection recovery as well as stacking offense and defense when damaged until the end of his next turn. Chewbacca for his stacking offense, pilot viability and assisting in Han Solo's insane opening damage. Darth Sion for being able to proc an extra life consistently. Darth Nihilus for his stacking max health each time Treyer or Scion receive a debuff. Asajj Ventress for a stacking offense, health, crit chance and turn me again whenever any unit is killed. And finally Barris due to a Zeta which gives her whole team crazy healing when they're critically hit. Now that's out of the way, let's take a look at the top 5 characters to put all the way to Relic 7. At our number 5 spot is old Daka who's made it this high onto the list for her insane role in the Night Sister team. She is basically the glue that holds the team together, you could pretty much kill the rest of the team but if she's still up she's going to just bring them back to life and to make matters worse she gains 50% turn meter and reduces the cooldown of her revive when an ally dies and more importantly with a Zeta, whenever a character is revived she gains 10% max health so you can imagine with her team how fast her health can get into the hundreds of thousands. Up at the 4th spot is Jedi Knight Anakin who is an absolute monster. This guy can wipe out whole teams with his bonus turn combined with his AoE when under his double damage buff which is triggered when an ally dies or falls below 50% health. He works quite well on a few teams but he's at his best when used with a Padme squad. He's the key reason why this team is one of the best in the game right now. If that isn't enough for you all, his ship is top tier and he's a massive part of why the Kenobi fleet is the current ship meta. So with him you're getting a top tier character and a top tier pilot, a really good investment and for sure one of the best you can make. Coming into the top 3 now we have General Grievous who similar to Anakin can easily wipe out full teams once he's stacked up health and lost a few allies. His damage just gets to the point where it's insane. This is because his damage is based on his max health, not his offense like other characters. 
So with the raw boost from health from Relic 7, you're massively increasing his damage output. This works well with his unique ability which gives him 5% max health for each droid ally at the start of each of his turns. This is going to stack up fast, especially with the bonus turns he gets when a droid or separatist ally is defeated. He's also the captain of one of the best fleets in the game right now, which adds to his viability even more. It was a close call between him and Anakin, but I just had to give the higher spot to Grievous simply because putting a relic on Anakin ruins the P3HC solo and makes it a lot harder to do. If it wasn't for this, I think I would have had to call it a draw between them. And at the number two spot is Darth Malak himself, one of the most powerful and durable characters in the game. He has stacking buffs that last for the whole battle, further increasing his survivability and damage. He can also attack for the total damage of his target's HP and heal for the same amount. He also gets bonus turns when he's damaged past certain health thresholds. I could literally talk for 20 minutes on him alone, but the guy is pretty much unkillable for most teams in the game. He's a one-man army that can fight whole teams alone without even breaking a sweat. He's also immune to health damage, which makes your options for dealing with him very, very limited. And at number one, it just had to be General Anakin Skywalker. Now, this is partly due to the fact he's absolutely useless unless he has a high relic level. So if you have him, you need to relic him as fast as humanly possible, all the way to relic seven. But when you do, you are going to receive one of the most powerful characters in the game, this guy can destroy Malak easily, as well as whole squads with ease. You can't even kill him until you've killed all of his 501st allies. He has a permanent taunt while he has protection and prevents 501st allies from losing health until all of his protection is gone. At this point, he sits down and he's untargetable. This is where you have a brief window to kill his team before he heals back to full protection, ready to protect his team again. And even if you do manage to kill all of his 501st allies and have a chance to actually end the battle, he becomes immune to crits and gains 35% turn meter whenever an enemy takes a turn. This combined with his 100% counter chance, cleanse on crits at the first part of the battle and much much more makes him the equivalent to a mini raid boss. Getting through this guy is going to be extremely difficult and probably impossible for many people. So there we have it everyone. I hope you all enjoyed the video and learnt a lot from the list. As I mentioned earlier, this was a really hard list to make as there's so many characters who would benefit from Relic 7. But it's such a heavy investment, you need to choose wisely which characters you're going to invest in and how to get the best overall benefit for your rosters as a whole. These characters on my list I feel get the most benefit from Relic 7 for their teams or as individuals. As always everyone, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, join my Discord server and share the video with your friends. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you all very soon.